Hi everybody, um, thanks for joining me for the flip lecture. Uh, what I would like to do in the introduction is just kind of give you an overview of where I would like you to go um, for the materials in, in the class. And one thing that I would want you to take note of as well as we think about, you know, flipping and, and why would someone flip and, and those, those types of things. Uh, this is another really good example, you guys, that I think flipped works very, very nicely. Um, again, I can give you some information in, in lecture, I can show you tools, I can, you know, do things like this, but um, in this, this is a great example of, you know, what I really need you to do is I just need you to examine the materials hands-on, probably at a computer, looking at the resources and so forth. And so I, I just want to urge you that even when you're at, at the elementary level, there's going to be some content and some time where, you know, using a flipped pedagogy is going to be very, very effective. In fact, very highly effective. So keep that in mind. Um, where I'd like to start first is actually down at the exit ticket, okay? Um, after you're done, notice the due date, Sunday, March 12th at midnight, so you have a good over a week to do this. Um, and you might want to do this in chunks because it does, it is going to take you a little bit of time. Um, the exit ticket, uh, just so that you know, um, I think just to give you an advanced organizer a little bit, I'm going to go back. You're going to watch a video of uh, Dr. Amy Hutchinson that provides a, an overview of literacy, especially um, what content you're going to teach and what pedagogical approaches that you're going to use. Note the questions that are being asked. So what you might want to do, or what I'm saying here is, I won't go through each of these questions, but go to the exit ticket first, find out what I'm asking you about the content that you're learning about, and then as you go back to the parts, you can take notes, you can, you know, you can do it that way so that you won't get to the exit ticket and think, oh my gosh, I didn't do it. Because again, you guys, you should be taking notes. Um, you should be um, jotting down things that you know. You have a reading for this. So there'll be different things to take note of, okay? So just, just to note that. So again, first you're gonna go to a video by um, Dr. Amy Hutchinson. Um, do note that, um, I'm gonna stop that. But do note, this, this click here will give you full screen if you would like that. Also note that mine came right up. I have seen this where maybe it will ask that you have like a silver light or something like that to load. You shouldn't even have to do that because there should be a link at the bottom that says if you want to watch the video using an older version. I think if you just click that, you'll be, you'll be okay. Hopefully it will come up just like it does here, but because we're all using different computers and everything, um, I just want to make sure that it does work. And if it doesn't, let me know, and um, I'll make sure that I do something else or to get it loaded somewhere else so that it does work. But I've really never had any trouble with it. So just take note of that. The third thing that you have to do, you guys, is go into a reading. Actually, some of you have probably already read this because I actually did assign it for last week. Um, you guys, it's one of my favorite articles uh, that I give in 201 because it is so in tune with kind of where we are and what we're doing. Um, it's called Infusing Technology into a Balanced Literacy Classroom. And if you look at it, um, what, what it's doing is it's actually taking a sixth grade classroom. I know it's a little bit older in, in terms of classroom, but you guys, it's still, it, it works for everybody. Um, and it, it talks about a sixth grade teacher's um, evolution of technology use or um, how this teacher is thinking about using technology for literacy very, very powerful and just really, really interesting insight into it. You can see that in the article, it does talk about TPAC, so that's that's a good thing too. You can see that, that scholars in the field are associating this um, framework with 
how people conceptually think about what they teach and how they teach and then with the technology but just to note they're going to talk about technology being used in a literacy classroom by as a novelty is the first way so kind of get an idea what they're talking about and what that would look like okay that's what i think is important the second one is when we're using technology in our classroom as a necessity and what that would look like and the third one is using technology if i don't pass it up here where did it go i think i passed it as a necessity there should be one on here as a natural sorry there we go sorry making you dizzy um, using technology as a natural okay now you might think about those names and think well if I'm using it as a natural that's probably saying you know what I'm smack dab in the middle I'm probably that's probably being a TPAC educator okay but it's a really interesting read and I think um, you'll you'll really get a lot out of it in terms of really thinking about you know um, where you will be in terms of using technology in your literacy classroom using those levels the other thing that when you get to your exit exit ticket for this one what i ask you to do is i ask you to take a look at um, some of the tools that he has mentioned in the article and or the authors have mentioned and you guys i counted over 25 of them okay now note as i say in the directions you can't talk about one that we've already used you guys use this as an opportunity to, to s learn about more tools remember what i keep saying i just don't have enough time to show you everything possible so when you read things like this take advantage and i know you're not going to go to all 25 but you guys don't even go to just one at least check out a few of them and then in the exit ticket um, you do have to kind of um, describe one that you had a look at and your your um, kind of evaluation of that tool a little bit so I think you'll enjoy discovering that and like I say you guys in a flipped environment this is a lot easier uh, because I know that you're on the tools and have the tools to do it okay um, let's see number four I'm pretty excited about this one too this one you guys is an actual website it's called read write think and I just think this is one of the best professional websites that you can find especially in the area of literacy okay note that it is um, supported by the International Literacy Association that would be ILA and then the National Council of Teachers of English those are the two um, kind of big dog um, uh, professional organizations for uh, literacy and English teachers okay so you guys this is a great website note just at the top I mean you can look at different things and, and so forth but classroom resources professional development kinds of things videos okay again just have a look at them um, and then parent and after school resources so again um, some of you are going to maybe do be tutoring students there might be some great resources in here that you can get a hold of. Um, you might have younger siblings, you might have children that you might benefit from accessing some of these resources, okay? So just have a look. But the one part that I really, really want you to look at is the classroom resources. Lesson plans, that should kind of light a light bulb for you. Um, remember, we'll be doing a lesson plan for this class. You guys, these are great resources. By great resources, what I mean is have a look at some of them. Just, just go into them and um, see what they're saying about the lesson, how have they prepared the lesson, because they're very thorough. And I would say that's where we want you to be even in 201. We want the lesson plan that you do to be very thorough, detailed, and um, doable um, and effective we hope okay so just have a look at that there's student interactives I'm going to come back to that in a minute mobile apps which is pretty cool you can have a look at that calendar activities and then printouts usually a lot of teachers get really excited about the printouts you guys I'm excited that you have this resource but you guys that's a worksheet 
okay? So again, at worksheets, there's a time and a place, but not a lot of the time, okay? So keep that in mind when you think about what are you gonna have your students to do, okay? And, and doing in the classroom. So I'm gonna have you go back up to the student interactives. And in the student interactives, you guys, um, notice you can refine your search by grade level, okay, if, if that's what you want to do, but they're pretty easy, easily searched, okay, and um, one way to do it is just to see all the student interactives. I just clicked up there. Notice there are 58 of these. So what, we're ask, what I'm asking you to do as part of the um, exit ticket is to review one of these go into at least one and you again you guys don't just is one enough look at a few really look at a few and see what what's out there and use that time to do that I want to give you that time to look at some of this stuff um, make the time to do it with the student interactives too you guys notice that they have them grade level okay there's some really cool ones and and notice there's six pages of these or more okay so just don't look at the first page take a look at them and see what interests you i'll just go into one really quickly here here's a bio cube um, notice about the interactive they talk about it they um they have uh, some other some other information there and then what i really like is They've highlighted lesson plans in grade levels that um, uh, they use this interactive in. And so you might want to even go into one of those lesson plans. And as you look at this, storytelling in the, in the social studies classroom. And really cool. Guys, there's the overview. You guys have to do an overview for your lesson. These lessons are put together in the tabs. So here's the standards that this lesson is aligned with. See, we're doing, we're doing exactly what teachers do for these kinds of things as well. Here's resources and preparation. You know, what are the materials that you have to get together for this? Um, here's the instructional plan. These, here's the student objectives. They're probably not quite written like ours, but at least it gives you an idea. And then here's, you know, kind of the step-by-step -step uh, see, this is storytelling, so it's probably going to take more than one time. We're learning that as well, but, you know, I picked kind of a long one here, but at least it gives you a good idea of, of where you want to be and how you want to do it, okay? So, um, you guys, one more time, I'm going to go back to student interactives. What I want you to do is just have a look at one of these. Here's featured, most popular or you can get the other ones that you want to do. If I go in the story map really, really quick here, um, you just click on the get started. It will start the interactive. It's literally kind of a program. Um, I'm going to Austin, Texas. Okay, and then choose a graphic organizer. You guys, I'm going to choose the setting map and then the place. So what students would do um, is just start describing their setting, okay, and go from there. Then once they get one part, it prompts them to do something else. What they're trying to do is trying to get them to think about what are they going to, you know, help them elaborate on their story setting and so forth when they're writing the story. So it makes a lot of sense, okay? But there's different story starters there too. So have a look at that. Um, have a look at one of these. Have a look at more than one, please. But I do think it will be a really um, uh, good thing for you to know about and to learn about. And, and do remember these student interactives, you guys, could be used for your own lesson plan okay you know just just saying so that's where you need to be um, this week on the flip lecture hopefully that gives you a little bit of a precursor I know now you can delve into it but I hope you have a great week and especially you guys I hope you really have a nice spring break so we'll see you when you when um, we start class again on the 21st thanks a lot